Welcome, ladies. It's a great privilege and it's a tremendous pleasure to invite you to join with us for this Lagbomer celebration from Bar Yachai to Ben Yishai, the crowning generation. And that's what we are. We are the seventh generation, the crowning generation, Malchus. And we're going to do this all together, Mir Tashem, today. And really, I can't think of a better day than today for Mashiach to come because Lagba Omer has so many connections to Geula and Mashiach, everything, it's all together there. And we learned this from the Rebbe, that we have to make these connections. And really, this is unsurprisingly the job of Mashiach. Not only he brings peace to the world in a physical sense, which of course we need very much right now, but he also brings peace in a spiritually within Tyra. And the Rebbe's Tichas are full of connections and making peace. And so all we have to do is open our eyes and see the connections. And we see how everything, the dots are practically touching at this point. And we just have to see it. And I'm sure we will. Good evening and a Frelich and Lagba Emer, ladies. Let's prepare a Tehillim and Tzedakah. The Rebbe asked as a Bakasha Nafshis, a heartfelt request, that whenever we say Tehillim, we should give Tzedakah at the same time, and that will double the impact of each. As Basi mentioned, the deep connections of Lagba Emer to Mashiach, let's do it, ladies. We have the power. We can turn things around on their head. The world is listening. The stage is set for the Geula Shlema. As we say to Hillen tonight, I want to point out something from the Hayyam Yem for Lag Baimer that we can think about. In the middle of the Rebbe would go out to the fields together with his Hasidim and actually made Lechaim over Mashke. They would witness many miracles, most of which were blessings for children, and people would wait the entire year for Lag Baimer. There are stories of brachas people received from our Rebbe as well. A shliach approached the Rebbe and repeated this about the Mittler Rebbe, and he then added, Since the Rebbe is the Mittler Rebbe's successor, we are asking the Rebbe for a miracle with regard to children. The Rebbe's face grew serious, and he then responded, Amen. Within a year, the first of the couple's many children were born, Baruch Hashem. So let's have in mind anyone who needs a bracha for children or any other siyata dishmaya, for shidduchim, for parnasa, for health, for nachas. Let's write to the Rebbe. Let's encourage others too on this most auspicious day. Kapitol Kuf Chaf Aleph 121 for the Rebbe. Shir Lama Esa Yavai Ezri. Ezri meim adenai, aise shamayim vaaretz. Al yitain lamait raglecha, al yonum shemrecha. Hine la yonum viloi yishan shemer Yisrael. Adenai shemrecha, adenai tzilcha, al yad yiminecha. Yoimam hashemesh loi yakeka viyoreach balayla. Adenai yishmarcha mikol ra yishmar esnafshecha. Adenai yishmar tzeschha oveecha, meata viad ailam. Rebbetzin's Kapitel, Kuf Chafbez 122. Shir Hamalais le David, Samachti Baimim li Bez Adenai Nelech. Aimdais Hayu Raglenu Bisharayich Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim Habenuya Kiir Shechubra La Yachtav. Shasham Alu Shvatim Shifte Ya Edos Li Israel, La Hades Le Shem Adenai. Kishama Yashfu Chisais Le Mishpat Kisais Le Vez David. Shalu Shlaim Yerushalayim. Yishlo I have Vayach. Yehi Shalom Bechelech Shalva Baramanai Sayach. Liman Achai Virei Adabrana Shalom Bach. Liman Beis Adinai Elehenu Avaksha Tev Lach. In Kapitel Chav 20, let's have a mind for the health and safety of Yidin all over the world, protection for the Yidin in Eretz Yisrael and Ukraine and everywhere, and basically. A deep, deep, deep Himmel Geshrei of Ad Masai. No more events, no more speeches. We want the real deal. Tonight, let's say farewell to the process and let's welcome Mashiach. May it be swift with kindness, gentle kindness and mercy. Kapitol Chaf, Amnatseach, Mizmar le David, Yancha Adinai Biyayim Tzara, Yisagev Chashem Elehe Yaakov. Yishlach Ezrecha Mikedesh Umitzian Yisadeka. Yiskar Kolmin Chesecha Vielascha Yidashna Sela. Yiten Lecha Chilvavecha Vachal Atzascha Yimali. Niranina Bishua Secha Uvashem Elehenu Nidgol Yimale Adenai Kol Mishale Secha. 
עתה ידעתי כי הישיע עד עיני משיחי יענה ומשמי קדשי, בגבורי שיישע ימיני, אלה ורכב ואלה והסוסים, ואנחנו בשם עד עיני אלוהינו נזכר. המה קרו ונפלו ואנחנו קמנו ונשדד, עד עיני הישיע המלך יעננו ויים קראנו. עד מסא יחי המלך, יחי עד עינינו, מרינו ורבינו, מלך המשיח לעילם ועד. The Rebbe had so much pleasure during Lag Baomer parades. Let's watch together some magnificent highlights and envision being there to witness the Rebbe's tremendous joy, pride, and love, especially for the little children. Rebbe, we are standing ready to march for the Welcome Shiach Parade. Right now we'll have the schus to hear a special message of the Rebbe Zol Gesundsein. We'll ask everybody to be uh, very, very quiet and listen attentively. In the Tziwe, in the Monzer, from the Haftu Leleyacho Komecho, of the Loshen, from the Rambam, and the Sederinim, from the Nahavas Yisroel, Eltern. Auf noch mehr steigen in Limud Atel, in Lernen Tel, und noch mehr steigen im Keim sein Mitzwes. Ich hätte den Mitzwes von Wahrhaftor Lerayacho Komecho, wo du sie der Heich verbunden in das Eben der Monte, am Wirkstein auf Ingel auf Ingel, und am Mädel auf Mädel, als ich sehe, soll mit keinem sein, den Buchukei sagt der Lecho, was mit zwei sagt der Schmelo, was ist er im Eisom, und das ist mit Wattlo, alle in Jonim Bilder zu ihm, und sie wird nimmschach, und sie kommt der Robbe Peel, da in Leila Maseha Gashmi, zu jeder von den Kindern, und du doch sei echt, zu jeder von seinen Eltern und zu jeder von die, wo seine Mechanik hat, die Kinder, in dem Mäbischen Zweig und in dem Mäbischen Stero und in dem Keim sein, seine Mitzwes, durch die Käse der Mäche und mit zwei Seite Schmelo, was ist am Eisholm? Let's get on with the Parade, Kinderler. May I just take one second? Let's give the Rebbe a bruche, that he should be zeche to take us out of Golos because of Mamesh la'atzeinu ha'gdoisha gesundai t'mfrelechei. Now we can go with the parade. <laughs> Here we have the Tzivus Hashem flag, the United States flag, and uh, America's flag. Chayole Tzivus Hashem with their own band. This is something new this time.
This is the County Tyrone Pipe Band. Am I right on that? County Tyrone Pipe Band. Okay, give them a hand. Let's go. You recognize the two? We want the sheikh now. And now, of course, the contingency again of the carriages. The little Elul and Miyankim through with Rabbeinu Shalom Yisada to Oiz. The Hash Beisayev of Misnakim. excited to introduce our first speaker. She, actually her list of qualifications truly humbles me here. She's a shlucha in Moscow. She's a mikveh advisor. She's an extremely talented writer who is passionate about bringing geula and shir shirim on the subject of inyani mashiach and geula regularly with her community and the broader world community. I know I haven't listed half the things she's done here, but she recently launched a 30-day learning program, which she shares her very insightful and perceptive outlook of Mashiach in poetry. We're in for a treat, and here she is, Mrs. Rifki Walansky. Hi, everyone. My name is Rifki Walansky from Moscow, Russia, and I was asked to share about an experience that I wrote about on Yadolf Nisan. And honestly, this is definitely going out of my comfort zone to share this again, this time on video. But I feel like it's the right thing, so I'm going to try. Um, we are in Shluchas for the past 10 years in Moscow. And even though from the beginning we thought about working towards getting Russian citizenship, we heard that it's a really, really long and difficult process and there's no guarantee that it will be successful. So we kind of just kept pushing it off until um, about two and a half years ago, we heard that there is a new law that if you have Russian roots, like someone in your family is from Russia, then, and you speak the Russian language, that you can have a shortcut to citizenship and it shouldn't be so difficult. So we tried and it was much harder than we thought. It took over two years just to collect the right documents that prove that I have Russian roots. I won't go into it. And, um, and even once we finally had everything we needed, we still needed a big miracle that it should go through because um, this place, um, this government building where they check the documents, they're very, very, very particular. They could like refuse a document just because there is a tiny difference in spelling between two papers or they're always like looking for any tiny mistake that could disqualify it. So, um, so we went, but I was warned. I was with a friend who's from Banachabad, and she's like, you know, don't like just because we're here doesn't mean it's gonna work out. Like most people have to come back again and again and again because they keep finding mistakes. But I was really, you know, like positive that it's gonna work out. It was first Khadish Adir and um we sat and we waited and it, we waited and waited and waited for almost four hours. It was very, very uncomfortable. And towards the end, I was just feeling like, oh my gosh, like this better not be for nothing. Like all this hard work for the past two years and especially now just, you know, spending a whole day, two hour car ride to get there and now waiting over four hours in a very uncomfortable place. Um, and I felt like I really want to ask the rabbi for a bracha um, that it should be successful, it shouldn't be for nothing. But I didn't have pen and paper, I didn't have Wi-Fi there, so I didn't have a way. But then I opened the Dvar Malchus and I was very tired, so I didn't have strength to learn the Mimer. I turned the page and I saw the letter of the Rebbe. And I started reading it, and it was an amazing, clear bracha. It said um, the Rebbe was writing to someone that he's hurried to hear about the delay in getting all the documents and permissions um, that he needed. And the Rebbe says, but I'm sure that like in the end, there's going to be Dida Natsach. And you'll be free to focus all your time on your real shlachos of being, you know, spreading the wellsprings of chasedos. And I was like, wow, this is such a clear bracha. There's also some other amazing things that happened. But right when I got this answer, like this clear bracha from the Rebbe, they called my 
number and we came and even though they found like um mistakes and they're like oh i think we're gonna have to refuse you but i just like i didn't even get nervous i felt like i know we have the rabbi's bracha and for hashem they ended up letting it go and that was amazing so i was done with step one and now i had to do a russian test to show that i'm fluent in russian which i shouldn't admit it out loud but i'm not fluent in russian so i needed a very big miracle to be able to pass the russian test um and Baruch Hashem, you know it came two weeks later and um it was also i'm not going to go into it but it was a very very big miracle like i came it was on also in the month of utter and on the lucky day for our family and i came there and um i just felt like you know hashem was taking care of me like this whole place was created just for us i was only of course jewish person there and Baruch Hashem, like miraculously my interview passed and um now I, you know, basically I'm done. I'm, I'm able to go for the, you know, for the next step um, to apply for the, you know, for permanent residency, which leads to citizenship. So now I had to come again, do the medical tests, and we did that a whole day. And then um, to come back again and actually just bring everything together and apply. So I come there. Oh, and the day that they gave me, for my application day was Yud Aleph Nisan. And at first I was like, Yud Aleph Nisan, I don't want to spend my Yud Aleph Nisan four hours in a car, plus who knows how many hours in a government office. And it's a few days before Pesach, never mind. Like, it's not where I want to be. But I realized, like, you know, it's a Shkacha Pratis, and I really need the Mazel Gaiver, um, because this whole thing, like, you really need a lot of Mazel. Um, it's totally Seat <laughs> Dishmaya, if it works or not. So I figured, okay, like, I, you know, this is the luckiest day of the year, and, and we went. Um, when I got there, Baruch Hashem, like five minutes later, they already called us, and they called us to window number 11, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I was expecting miracles, and here I was seeing it clearly, like, you know, 11, and even my not Lubavitch friend, like, tried to take a picture of it because she was also like, wow. And they found huge mistake with my immigration card that was on the wrong passport, and even though that's something that they would never like let go, they let it go. And again, I wasn't even surprised. I was like, of course, it's Yalaf Nisan. And then they found another like mistake, which they almost refused us for. And in the end, she came back and she's like, it's fine. And like this friend and the lawyer who were with me were like shocked. They were like laughing. They're like, oh my gosh, this never happens. This would never go through. This is amazing. This is such an open miracle. She even said, like, if I come with you one more time, like, I'm going to become a chassid because, like, you, this is just such clear open miracles. And I was just, you know, feeling like, wow, this is so amazing. Went to do my fingerprints and, like, picture, and I come back, and now it's the final thing um, that we need to wait for, you know, now that we have everything, 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 we just need to apply. And um, while we're waiting, we learned the mimer, Ananasiv Malka from Yudalf Nisan, I choose the king. And finally, after a few hours, long hours of waiting, they called us this time, number 14, um, uh, to number window number 14. And that's where, like, you know, all these amazing miracles kind of stopped. Um, apparently, because she just, you know, I gave her my passport, and my passport I had given in so many times before. Nobody ever noticed a problem. And suddenly she opens it, and the first second she's like, doesn't have a signature. There's no way that this is valid. And I was like shocked. <laughs> Signature, like I realized, oh my gosh, I didn't sign my passport. And no one had noticed, like I already flew with this passport. Nobody, you know, no one noticed. I gave this passport so many times, no one noticed. Suddenly here, like at the very, very end, um, she's saying like, sorry, you don't have your passport. There's like, you know, that means your copy and translation are not valid. Like there's nothing to do about it. Um, you have to come back another time. And, uh, um, right away, like my friend got nervous because she was like, oh my gosh, if we are going to have to go back another time, in the meantime, other parts of my documents, like my fingerprints are going to become uh, expired and I'm going to have to do it all over again. It's going to take another few months just to get back to this point. But I, when I heard these words, like you're missing a signature, I can't even explain to you. Like it was just such a, such a, a clear moment for me of such a clear sign from Hashem and I just started crying and crying and crying. I was like, I don't I don't even know when the last time I cried like that. I just got very, very emotional because I was like, oh my goodness. Um, Hashem is really telling me something here that I didn't want to hear, that I didn't want to know. 
um, because it was Yira of Nisan and I, on my mind, had been, you know, this question about signatures because there was like someone, you know, spreading a campaign to sign, um, you know, a couple of small clothes and I myself didn't even sign yet and I, you know, and I felt a little guilty. I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do it and I definitely didn't feel comfortable sharing it, passing it around to other groups, but I also felt a little like that that would be the right thing to do, but I just don't feel comfortable. And um, like, I, I, I was missing my signature for the Rebbe on that day on Yid al And here they were like, this is what's stopping it. And it sounds crazy because the signature is the easiest part. I mean, it's nothing. It takes five seconds um, less and, and it takes no effort. It's so easy. And this could hold back the whole process that I worked on for over two years, like, and all the miracles that I experienced, like it just, it, just, it didn't make sense. And this to me, was a message that yes, it's really possible that, you know, we've been through um, so much. We've been through thousands of years of Gaulus. We've been through, you know, and we got so far, we got so close to the point of, you know, like we're ready for Gula and the Rebbe told us everything was done, everything, everything with, you know, and so many miracles and, and amazing things happened. But like, this was my message like that I heard that yes, like the little signature, my little signature is what's missing and could be holding back this whole process from from finishing. And I, you know, I was just like, like literally like crying out loud and, and she was like, what's going on? Like, you know, like, okay, it's really upsetting, but she didn't expect such a reaction. And I just told her, like, I think I know why this happened. Like, I, like I understand the message and, and I, tried my best to explain it to her and she actually really got it and you know the only question she had is like well what about after Gimel Tamas and I said of course like you know it's not an issue at all in Allah like Mashiach can come from those who passed away and she really like she really got it right when the operation started with Ukraine and you know I remember learning in Parshas Mishpatim the Rebbe said that because of the signatures that Rabbanim gave saying that the Rebbe is the Cheskas Mashiach and that the time for Gila has arrived that this is what allowed Mashiach to fulfill his um, role as Mashiach in creating peace in the world. And this is what caused the, the peace agreement between the United States and Russia back in 1991. And I was thinking like, like maybe this is what's needed. Like, you know, where this is like just some signatures that could, could actually like, um, you know, bring world peace and allow Mashiach to finish his job. Like this is, this is, you know, I didn't want to believe that this is possible, but then on Yudolf Nisan, it just kind of came together as saying, like, the Mazel Gaiver that I needed today was not about me getting, you know, some document, but it was about me being strong in 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 acknowledging that the Rebbe needs us. The Rebbe really, really needs us um, in order to be able to fulfill his shlichas, Yaakov Yudah Hecht, who, you know, once told the Rebbe, like, you know, I don't have to worry about opposition, that the Rebbe has opposition. It sounds a little like the Shmuel Monk story. Like, because if the Rebbe wants the opposition to go away, just with a snap of his finger, he can make it go away. So, you know, it's it, it's the Rebbe's issue. Um, and the Rebbe answered that I have as much kayach as the Hasidim give me. And if we think about it, like the, just this, you know, he was saying it in connection with like, and how we have to give back to the Rebbe. And the Rebbe has, you know, it's, it's that heart and body connection that, you know, we have to give back to the heart and that's what gives the Rebbe strength. That's what gives the Rebbe the ability to continue to to give us even more and to bring us to to the full um, to the full Giula, to redeem us. How hard is it? Like we love the Rebbe. We know the Rebbe is like the greatest person in history. And why wouldn't we want to just give our signature and just say like, yes, I am your, like, I'm in your army. I'm, I'm your... I'm your, I'm your nation, you know, I, I choose you, I choose the king, and I, I choose you to be my king, and when we do that, like, there's, there's nothing to lose, and there's really everything to gain. Because... Thank you so much, Rifki, I just really look forward to meeting you in person and dancing with you in the base of Mikdash today, Amir Tashem. Our next speaker is a dear classmate of mine, she's also a shlucha, a wife, a babi, a mother, Hashem, us together, and she is the founder and principal of Mugging Yisrael Center together with her husband. She gives countless shirim. She's passionate about Mashiach and Geula and considers it a great favor to her community to share this information with them. 
We are delighted to bring you Mrs. Tammy Hyampour of Great Neck, New York. She'll share with us how she communicates this information to her community. So, what do we do when we want to talk to the world about Mashiach? And why have we been so hesitant? You know, I recently spoke for a group of ladies, and at the end of it, one of the ladies came up to me and she said, Well, Tammy, thank you so much for debunking the concept that Mashiach is a taboo subject. Thank you for teaching us. For some reason, people have this strange notion that Mashiach is a taboo subject. Secondly, people are afraid. They seem to think that Mashiach is synonymous with the some colossal Rahman Litzalan apocalypse of the entire world. And Baruch Hashem, the Rebbe, is taught us otherwise. So firstly, why do people think that it's such a mystical thing? They seem to think that when Mashiach comes, we're no longer going to be ourselves. We're going to become these floating angels. Um, and that Mashiach himself is some floating angel. Um, and it's simply a lack of learning Das Torah. You see, Mashiach is not any different than teaching any other subject in Torah. So when we want to get someone to keep Shabbos, we teach them the halachos. Kashros, same thing. Mashiach and Geula is not any different. When we want to teach people about Kabbalah Samalchus, about the Renaissance, about reestablishing Malchus based David, it's the same criteria. It what, what is Das Torah? What does Torah tell us? What does Hashem want? And the only way we know what Hashem wants is through Torah. Well, let me tell you something. If you could teach Tahar Samishpacha, you could certainly teach Mashiach and Geula. Just go back to the basics. Open up El Chais Malachim and teach simple things such as that Mashiach is a human being born to a father and mother, that he is a melech, and a melech means a king. By definition, a king needs to be appointed by the people. He can't come and say, hello, I'm Mashiach, accept me. That would make him a dictator. It's us, the Amcha, the people, who have to come and appoint him. And I also, of course, refer a lot to um, you know, the Gemara, uh, Gemara Brachis, which talks about how Mashiach can come from the living or from the Sheikh, Afar, and that it's a, by no means a contradiction to what the Rambam talks about when he talks about Im Kam Melech Mi Israel and Vim uh, Nehag Chas Vechalila. There, it's talking about Im Nehag. It's not talking about a natural process. And it's not just talking on a simple physical level. I think that everyone can agree that since Gimel Tammuz, Tammuz the Rebbe's koyach is hoylech v'gadol v'oid v'oid. The Rebbe's influence on the world has only grown and manifested a thousandfold, has always spread more and more. In addition, we really do the greatest kindness to people when we share the Rebbe's message with them. So many people are afraid of Gog Magog. I've had people tell me, oh, more Tammy, I, I know we're supposed to want Mashiach, but I don't want it because I'm so afraid that there's going to be some colossal war and everything will become destroyed. There'll be chas v'shalom, chas v'shalom, the end of the world, God forbid. And it's so important that we teach them what the Rebbe has taught us. Firstly, the Gog of Magog has already happened. It's happened throughout the length of our Galus, but it's been more than enough covered between... All the Tach and Tat programs and the destructions of the Beis Hamikdash, and uh, I'm not saying it's in chronological order. Yeah, in in the Spanish Inquisitions and in the Holocaust, but over and above, we've already finished that, and that 
even if you want to say that there is a Milchemet Gogu Magog that's supposed to come, well, the Rebbe quotes Perik Bet of Tehillim, where it says, Lama Rak Shagoyim, Ulimim Yegu Rik. Why do nations clash with each other? That Gogu Magog is about the nations clashing with each other and not the Yidden. Not that we want Chas V'chalila, the Yidden going to suffer. Egu Rik, why are people worrying about Hevel V'rik, about nonsense? We don't need to worry about this. Mashiach is simply revealed good. And we need to go out there and give this message to the world because people are sincerely concerned and afraid. And when we teach them, they're simply so comforted and so relieved. So, number one, we need to teach people what does Torah say about Minui Melech, about pointing Hashem sent somebody who is suited to be Melech HaMashiach. You know, it says that if a generation doesn't um, bring the Geula, doesn't bring Mashiach, it's as if they destroyed Chas V'chalila, the Beis HaMikdash. So I ask you, if, 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 how can we be accused of something like that if there isn't someone suited to be Mashiach? You understand that every generation, and certainly in our generation, Hashem is over and above, given us the best Mashiach, who halachically fits the criteria. I want to just um, dwell a minute on the concept also of the Cheskat Mashiach. The Cheskat Mashiach people translate loosely as the potential Mashiach. That's not an accurate translation. Because everything goes back to halacha, to what does Torah say? Torah is very meduyak. The cheskas means you have a chazaka. To have a chazaka means it is unless proven otherwise. A simple halacha. If somebody lives in a house for three years, they have a chazaka that that house belongs to them. If somebody else wants to come and say, no, 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 it's my house, they have to disprove the person living in the house. So when we say that there is a concept of the Cheskas Mashiach, we're saying that he has a Chazaka unless proven. Otherwise, this concept of Minui Melech, of looking who fits the criteria, who fits the Halachos, according to the most fundamental Halachos found in the Rambam and beyond, that, that's our obligation to do. So may Hashem, may Hashem bless us, may, may He, how do you bestow, crown our efforts with, the, 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 with, 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 uh, with success, with the ultimate crown, the crown of crowning our Melech HaMashiach. And as we began by saying, Bet Semach David Avdecha Meherat Atzmiach. Amen, came here, so may we all celebrate together with the Geula Amitis Ve'ashlema. In the third base of Mikdash, we see the Reinu be Roshenu. And now to our next presentation, I'm privileged to introduce you to Hanala. Hanala is a singer, songwriter, and performer whose deep and moving songs open the hearts and touch the spirits of women in communities all across the globe. Her powerful performances excite and inspire all female crowds in places as far as China, South America, Alaska, Colombia, Australia, South Africa, and Israel. Hanala charms her audience with her upbeat attitude and warm smile, creating a unique bond with listeners. Whether behind the piano, guitar, or mixing desk, Hanala remains the leading voice in the Jewish female music scene. To book her for an event or purchase tickets for her famous kumzits, visit hanalamusic.com, C-H-A-N-A-L-E music.com. The song we will now hear is Yerushalayim, and specifically about our yearning for the Beis HaMikdash as we weave ourselves from Bar Yochai to Ben Yishai as the crowning generation. Since one of the three things we must show Hashem is our desire and yearning for the Beis HaMikdash so His Shechina can dwell amongst us, may it happen now, Mamish. As in the lyrics, our bias will descend in fire to light your streets again and fulfill the world's desire. Of this 
them all the world would hail For there you throw out a shining light for all to see And they would come together, pledge their love forever Tying the knot at our Sinai The dowry was the land of milk and honey And the joy it would bring as time went by From Egypt's liberation through the splitting sea The nations of the land is Rabbi Reuven Wolf from the Mayan Yisrael Show in Los Angeles, California. And he really is a Mayan, a fountain of incredible knowledge and a constant flow of learning and spreading in Yanni Mashiach and Gula as the Rebbe instructed. He has inspired Klal Yisrael around the globe and he continues with this incredible work. And he really needs very little introduction, so we are pleased to present Rabbi Wolf. When we think about um, all the work we've done, all the work from the day the world was created, 
and all the Torah and mitzvahs and all the Messiris nefesh and all that has been done. It's all about the purification. It was all about the preparation. It was all about making the world ready for the ultimate godly revelation where Hashem moves in and reveals himself into this world and he has the fulfillment of his desire of having a dira, a home in this world. Now that process of bringing the Ebersh there and making a dira betachtoinim um, involved the collective work of all of humanity and all the work of the Jewish people. Once that's done and we come time to the final revelation, how does Hashem reveal himself? Hashem reveals himself as the melech of the world, as the king of the world. He channels that leadership through the malchus of Moshiach Tzedkenu, which is the extension of Malchus based David. Malchus based David is not a private kingdom, it's the kingdom of Hashem Himself. And David and Mashiach and all the chain of the of these of these kings, they are the transparent conveyors of the Eberster's Malchus. So as it comes, and as the Rebbe told us that everything has been done already, and we are holding already at the completion of everything, and the only thing that is needed, the Rebbe says, is, is a sicha where the Rebbe says it in Tafshin. Nun Aleph, Pasha Shoftim, the words of the Rebbe, incredible words. The Rebbe says, David that the appointment of David Malka Mashiach happened already. That the only thing and, 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 and the only thing that's still necessary is the Kabbalah Samalchus Adayam, that the people have to accept the, from the connection of the Melech and the Yam through the Kabbalah Samalchus that's through the Yam. And it's basically the same idea like we know by David Amelech, because by David Amelech, even though he was appointed by Hashem, he said Hashem sent Shmuel Navi to put the Shem and Amishcha on David Amelech, but all of that was not sufficient until the Avner Bener went and campaigned across the entire land to bring the Yidden to David Amelech so that they can make an official coronation. And why is that necessary? Once Hashem appoints a king, why is it necessary? And the answer is because the king is the king over us, even since. Even the Eberster's Malchus, which basically the Malchus based of it is the Eberster's Malchus, requires a coronation. It requires our acceptance. That's what we do every Rosh Hashanah. The Eberster says to us, we should blow Shoifer. And all of this is Kedei Shetam Luchuni Aleichem, that you should make me king over you. The Eberster is asking of us that we should make him king because he can't be a king on, on his own over us because kingship involves two parties. And obviously, for the ultimate realization of the Eberster's kingdom through Melech HaMashiach, especially since the Malchus has been interrupted for so many years, and it has to be reignited and re, re uh, 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 reawakened, it requires the Am to awaken up that Malchus. In Hasidus, it explains that the, the Indian of Malchus by the king is something embedded in his very, very essence, but because it is so essential, it is so deep inside, it requires a very powerful stimulator. And the stimulator can only come from the people. We stimulate it by crying out, long live the king. That's the way it is. It, it is. it is awakened by the Abishter, and that is the way it is awakened by a Melech, including Melech HaMashiach. Right now, this has been given to us now, even though there has been already this koch and this excitement 30 years ago, when the Rebbe said these powerful sikhs, and we were holding at the threshold, literally, of the redemption, and everybody was so excited, and we were doing this Kabbalah Samalchus, various different campaigns, for whatever reason that only the Eberster knows, there had to be a Helen Vahaster, a concealment for, and a, 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 what seems to be a, not, not an interruption, but a concealment on Malchus based on it. But that's the MS when it comes to the way Malchus based of it works. It works in a, in a system of revelation and concealment. You have that because the, the, the um, uh, Malchus based David is compared to the moon. The moon waxes and wanes. It's in the sky, it's bright, and then it begins its decline. So we have, it says in the Zayar, that uh, from Avram Avinu until David Amelech, that was the beginning of the establishment of Hashem's kingdom. But it took 15 generations until it was Kaimasi Arabish Lamusa, till the moon was in its fullest, and then it had its decline. 
and it disappeared. And we went into a bit of the gullus, into a very dark exile for 2,000 years. But we are promised, that we, the Jewish people, are going to be renewed in this world, and our malchus is going to be renewed in this world. And it's compared to Chidush Halavana, which comes back after its concealment. So that's cosmic in the bigger picture, but it is also regarding the actual um, manifestation of Moshiach's Malchus, it also goes through revelation, concealment, and revelation. Like we know what the Medrash tells us in the Pasuk, that the king is, that the my beloved Hashem and the Redeemer is compared to a tzvi, to a deer. Ma tzvi, just like a deer, just like a deer, you're watching a deer, or you're, you're somewhere and you see suddenly a deer piping out of the bushes, you see the deer, you see, get excited about it, and then suddenly, because the deer is so quick, it disappears from view, you don't see it, but then the very same deer pipes up, another, like an hour later, you see him somewhere, like coming out in the bushes again. So it says, that's the way it's going to be with was with, with Goyal Rishon, the first redeemer with Moshe Rabbeinu, and so it is going to be with Goyal Achan. He will be revealed, concealed, and then re, um, um, revealed again. And it could be, and it makes sense to say, that just like it is in the Redeemer himself, in the Melech himself, that the Melech is here concealed and then revealed again, the same is on the Am's end, on the people's end, that they identify as his people also in a state of revelation, concealment, and revelation. Now, during the time of concealment doesn't mean they disassociate Chas Rishon from him, but this Indian, that he's their Melech, he's their king, and he's their Redeemer, that Indian can go in Chas Shalom into a state of concealment. And that's what we saw happen for 30 years. The darkness that came upon the world, the darkness that came upon us Chassidim, the darkness that happened kind of had suppressed this MS, this truth. But it has to again reveal itself. Something will always come back and re, 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 resurge, will resurface when it is true, when it is an MS. That's the deeper meaning of MS Meir, it's Titzmach. The truth, even if you bury it in the ground and you, you, you literally, and you bury it and you put a lots of heaps of sand on top of it because it's true, eventually it's going to sprout forth. No one will ever deny those moments when we watch the Rebbe coming out on the porch. We watch the times when the entire Chabad sang with all their heart and souls and when Makabal the Malchus of the Rebbe in such a clear way and our Rebbe stood there. No one can deny the amazing uh, that Rebbe was giving us before Chazai and others, such powerful, powerful sikhs telling us again and again and again that we're mamash at the threshold and that our avoida now needs to be the avoida of evictuous alakayim as David Malcolm. Yet, Dafkaza, you know, there's a famous letter from the Frida Gerebbe where the Frida Gerebbe says that the Abishta could have had it much easier, but the Abishta makes a Dafka hard for himself. Everything that has to be realized in this world that is godly. It is Dafka challenged with incredible challenges. The Friedrich, it's a, it's a beautiful letter. It has, I think, like 15 things the Friedrich had ever said. The Ebershter could have made, given us the Torah in heaven. It would have been far more successful. He chose to give it Dafka on earth. The Ebershter could have put us into very Eidel Gufim. He gave us Dafka very coarse Gufim. The Ebershter could have made that from when we were born, we right away have our Nefesh the kiss. The Ebershter, no, made the Nefesh of Bahamas preceded. The Ebershter could have made that Chassidish family should all be born with the best material, meaning the most Eidel to Gufim. And so on and on. The Ebershter made that Dafka, we have coarse bodies and Dafka, we have challenges and Dafka, it's hard with our children and so on. Why? Because Dafka despite all the cards stacked against it, despite all the hardships, since it's MS and it's true, the truth will come out. That's the whole concept of Dira B'tach Tainim. The Ebershta also dims, makes it darker and darker and darker, too, as the Alter Rebbe calls it, Tachn Shein Tachn Lamatav Emenor, and Dafka, in that darkness, the ultimate MS of the Ebershta sprouts forth. And so it is with the final MS of Mashiach Tzadkenu. Yesterday I was by a, a, a dinner and Prata, someone sat down next to me and he told me something really amazing. He says that it says in, 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 in he said this from the name of a Litvisha rabbi, he's a, that, that he heard him speak and the guy, the person in Zerav was saying that Mashiach is Mamash here and he was saying that Mashiach comes at a time when we kind of feel so hopeless, when there's no leadership, when we feel like kind of, and this, this Litvisha Rav said 30 years ago there was such a sense that Mashiach is coming. It's interesting, un, not necessarily been known to him or subconsciously, that's actually the time when the Rebbe was coughing a Mashiach and making such a Mashiach tumult is what the rabbi said 30 years ago with the fall of communism the Mashiach was so palpable and then we went into a time of darkness of Shomash Tzadis a remez to this idea that Mashiach comes through 
in a time of hopelessness and a time when it's so hard, he brought from the first, one of the main stories in the title where it's talking about the birthing of Mashiach. And when is that? The story of Yehuda and, and uh, um, Tamar, right? And they're giving birth, and then their marriage, they give birth to Perach, Peretz, and that's the, and that's the lineage of David Malka Mashiach of Mashiach. But as the story begins, there is a marriage that takes place before that. Yehuda marries Batshua, well, obviously, and, and then they take Tamar as a daughter-in-law and whatever. So over there it says when Shelah is born, the third son, it says, Vehi Vahaya, something like that, or that she was in, in Ksiv, in a place, a town in Eretz Yisrael that's called Ksiv, and in that town was at the time when they were born. So this rabbi said, the word Ksiv means hopeless. That's the meaning. Like we say, Kala Adam Kaizev. When you feel cheated, when you feel like, like that it's not it's, that something that you know was supposed to happen, you were hoping for something, and the hopes were dashed. That's called a state of of kaizev. You feel like 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 a certain what was supposed to happen didn't happen. You feel a letdown. So he says that Mashiach comes. That's why it says the word biksiv. Believe it to say, When do you have the birth of Mashiach? Tafka, when we reach that point of ksiv, we reach such a strong sense of hopelessness. And then the rabbi went on to say something that ksiv is the word chav zayin yudbeiz. And he said some kind of a Torah that he said. But this fellow that was there um, told me that he went over to the rabbi and he said, you have no idea what you just said. You said something really, really, you just explained to me chav zayin adar. You know, we Lubavitch suffered two horrors in chav zayin adar, two consecutive ones. It was the rabbi's first stroke and the rabbi's second stroke. And what did that do to us? It gave, that's the, that was the root of all the sense of Kaizev. We were given promises. We were told Basi Ligani. We were told Jafutsa Menesech Chutsa Mashiach is coming. We were told that Ot Ot Mashiach. We were told all the promises. And at that very moment, trach, we had one Chavzai and other. We had another Chavzai and other. So many painful events. And that made us, why are people burnt out? Why are people tired when you talk to them about this? And when you see mention Kabbalah Samachos that happened 30 years ago, people say, Oi, you know, they feel like, it was, they didn't understand. The Rebbe said, but then it didn't happen. So we have to go on and go to something else. That's hard. And you don't blame anybody. I also felt that way. We all feel that way at certain times. And that's the idea of Kaizev, the Ksiv. Now, Chav Zayin, Yud Beis. Yud Beis is the 12th month. So Chav Zayin represents Chav Zayin, the 27th day of the 12th month. And if you want a Rebbe, even stronger. It's Bichsiv. It says the Pasuk, and you can read it, Beis Chav Zayin Yud Beis, two times, because we had Chav Zayin once and Chav Zayin other a second time, which brought us to a state of ho hopelessness. But that itself is the way Malchus Beis David works. It works in a point when you reach a point of ayin, a point of nothingness, a point of frustration, a point of darkness, a point of almost giving up, and tough at that moment, bang, it comes back in full force. Now we're living in a most amazing, amazing opportunity right now because um, there has been a big aside at us. Bechlal in the world, after what we've gone through in the last in the last Shemitah, really, we're watching unprecedented events, events after event, and they're all surprises. The thing that the common denominator between everything that has happened, let's talk in the last two years, when, when we're talking about COVID, um, we're talking about um, Maron, we're talking about Surfside, Rahman al -Atslan. We talk about um, and the and the Ukrainian war and the the reawakening of of terrorism in Eretz Yisrael by you know even like a new thing like Israeli Arabs which were kind of till now were more or less behaving and now like these gefelach etzaris terrible things that we we've we've been through and but in addition to that there were also some amazing amazing developments that are like it's beyond. Like when we had earlier, also started at the Shemitah, when we had the announcement in Yerushalayim, we had Rubashkin Fried and the joy that came along with that. We had, and the most amazing thing that people don't have the, 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 the incredible aspect of it is when we had the Abraham Accords, when you had, and still effective now, even Edrogen, whatever his name is, they're from Turkey, is now becoming friends with, with Israel. Um, um, they're, they're from nation after nation in the Arab world. It's so crazy that one of the most famous popular Chalamoy trips is Dubai. Who would have thought that? 
The thing about all these events, everything, the good and the not so good, is that all of these came in a way that we were totally unexpected. They all hit us in the gut. And that's an indication that they're coming Momaila and the world is shaking up and the world is ready for something new. So because of all these events and because of all these Inyanim cracks in the Klippa that has been, or the the this, this darkness that was sitting on our hearts is breaking open and we're finding that people are far more receptive to the message of truth, which is what the Rebbe told us. That the Melech HaMashiach, Melech HaMashiach is not only the Metzius of Melech HaMashiach is here already, but Melech HaMashiach is already here. The Giloi, his galos, we're already at the table with the Shoyer Abar and the Leviyos. And as the Rebbe said to Rebbe Mordech, the Mashiach is already here. We just have to pull him into our house. All these truths are now suddenly resonating again in the hearts that have been under the spell of Ksiv, under this, this, under this, um, um, in, in a burnt out stage, the juices are beginning to flow. We are now we have organized a campaign of Kabbalah Samalchus. And for the first time, when I was beginning to organize it, I was excited and said, you know what? We're just going to take this to the masses. I got very strong answers from the Rebbe that it should not be a, a, a campaign that, that goes around the leadership in Lubavitch. It should work dafka with the entire leadership. And the first time we reached out to Rabbanim all across the aisle. At this point, we have already like 36 signatures of respectable, the entire Vav, the Rabbanu, the Chabad, and Eretz Yisrael. And we're not talking about people that you would have expected would sign this. People that, it's basically a, 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 a Ksavis Kashros, a write, a, a, a document, just like we gave to the Rebbe in Tavshin Yud Aleph when we asked him to be our Rebbe. We declared that we will give Zich over to him. We're giving ourselves over. This is a Ksavis Kashros. It's a powerful cry of Admasai. We are saying the Rebbe, we are backing him. You are a Melech and we're your people. And it's now it has been endorsed by all these Rabbanim and more of them are joining. And everybody that's over here, not only should you sign, even if you signed things like this before, you should sign it again and you should encourage others to sign it and send it. You know, you know, this campaign is going to have like charity teams where people get people to give money instead of giving money. We're asking people to sign on the dotted line. Put your signature to the Rebbe saying, Rebbe, I am one of your Am, Ein Melech B'loi Am. We are here. We're your people. You be our king. We are your subjects. And that's it. And once the Rebbe has the backing of the Am, then it's it's all done. Then 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 we're ready. Then we're ready to go. We're ready to march and build the base on Migdash. And we're gonna see the ultimate is Galos of godliness, holiness, and the Abishter's kingship and the kingship, which is one with the kingship of Melech HaMashiach. And every single person who is participating in this and in spreading it will forever, ever, ever be able to say and feel and connect that I took part in the ultimate and complete coronation, doing the last and final act that was necessary to, to eliminate all darkness and bring in the reign of holiness and ultimate truth in the world, realizing what we've been doing from the beginning of time. I was part of what's called in Mimsech the Shabbos, Maka Bepatish, the one who does the final bang. We were all the participants in it. So let's do it. Let's do it with simcha. Let's do it with joy. Let's do whatever we can to get it out everywhere and bring about the complete renaissance of Malchus Beis David and let it be now. It is extremely hard to find the words to thank Rabbi Ruvian Wolf for the constant encouragement, inspiration, and enthusiasm. It's absolutely contagious. Rabbi Wolf does not allow any stone to be unturned in our desire, our quest, and insistence on Mashiach imminently. May he and all of us immediately see the fruits of our labor when Hashem sends us Mashiach on this night of Bar Yochai to Ben Yishai, the crowning generation. Esther Friedman is an accomplished performer who brings incredible energy, a beautiful voice, and true meaning to the stage. Born and raised in Miami, Florida, the fifth child to a Chabad family, Esther displayed musical ability at a young age and began composing music and writing her own lyrics accompanying herself on guitar and piano over 15 years ago. Since then, she has electrified audiences across the globe, including Amsterdam, London, Sweden, and throughout the United States, and has performed at the International Kinesach Luchais twice. Ranging from slow, soulful ballads to high-energy songs with Hasidic concepts bound to capture, inspire, and warm the hearts of her audience, what unites all of her songs are the meaningful lyrics that reflect her desire to share the beauty of Judaism with the world. 
an original songwriter and lyricist, Esther uses her music as a medium to empower women to find their own voice. I am so excited to bring you this masterpiece tonight as we prepare to embrace our king. Hello, everyone. I am truly honored to be a part of this program. When I wrote this song, I thought about how we should always be thinking of Mashiach, especially during our own personal good times. We all want Mashiach. We may have different ideas of how to bring the time faster, but the perfect recipe is the Jewish woman uniting in prayer, inspiration, faith, and joy. Relax and enjoy. I can't wait to see you in the Geula with the Rebbe. And remember, we don't want to cry. When we say Ad Masai, we want to sing when we think of our King. Mashiach now. Thank you. In 1992, together with a few women from Crown Heights and the leadership of Nesheh Chabad, several key activist women such as Mrs. Mindy Halberstam, Mrs. Shifrachana Henry, Mrs. Trana Light, Mrs. Steiner Spritzer, Mrs. Mrs. Leah Pinson, and others, I'm sorry if I'm missing anyone out, initiated a series of pulos and Kabbalah's hamalchus, which received unprecedented brachis and incredible cure from the Rebbe. Throughout all of the planning for any Kabbalah Samachas event, there were constant warm responses from the Rebbe Melech Mashiach, one after the other, encouraging every activity that they wanted to do. So naturally, this encouragement further inspired the women to continue promoting the Kabbalah Samachas of the Rebbe Melech Mashiach. 
even if in the beginning the Sheikh Chabad was unsure if they were doing the right thing, when they saw the type of responses coming from the Rebbe constantly and continuously, there were no more doubts. <laughs> A particular note was a huge famous Malava Malka slash Kabbalah's panim for Melech Mashiach, which took place on Matzah Shabbos Kaidesh Chaf Ches Teves 5752, the birthday of the Rebetzin. Chana. Nesheh Rabad arranged a Sudas Malava Malka for the acceptance of Mashiach Tzidkenu. It wasn't that they were inviting the Rebbe to come to a Fabrengen. They wanted the Rebbe to come as Melech HaMashiach, and they made a beautiful gold engraved invite addressed to Kveid Malchosei, Melech HaMashiach, that we're holding a Kabbalah's, Kabbalah's Panim for Melech HaMashiach, and we want the Rebbe to say Tere Hadasha and come as Mashiach. And they were even able to get the downstairs of 770, which was in itself a miracle, because the only special occasions in the Sheikh Abad used to get the downstairs, which was never usually empty of men, but only on rare occasions. They were getting constant, direct, strong brachas from the Rebbe. So even people who were skeptical in the beginning and were kind of like mocking the idea a little bit, it became more and more obvious that the Rebbe was in it. Um, the Sheikh Abad all around the world were also making simultaneous gatherings as well. There were thousands in, in Paris and in England and in, 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 in Belgium and in Australia and all in different parts of the United States and places all over the world kept getting brachas. That Malava Malka was a historical event. Women from all over the neighborhood came in throngs and Shifrachana assumed there may have been about 10,000 women and the place was packed even an hour before it was supposed to start. It was jam-packed from wall to wall. And the Rabbanim who were invited to speak, which they invited like great speakers from all around the world, um, they had to be asked to actually try to come early so that they would be able to start the program because everybody was there early. Right from the beginning of history, in my opinion, Yaki Levino teaches us that Medav Zach Kochen in Moshiach. So I wander around the world and these Machen Letzonis and those criticize and those are skeptical, etc., etc. And it's impossible not to be weakened a little bit, not to be influenced a little bit. Nobody likes to be laughed at. Nobody likes to be criticized. 
So what does one do who lives the Tachtun Shebe Tachtunim in Australia? <laughs> it's more than just a joke what I'm going to tell you. There is a story going around the world that a Russian Agoy and a Frenchman Agoy and Le Havdel Ayit came out from a clinic where there were specialists. And the three of them, Achmor and Islam, the specialists told them they've only got three months to live. So as they walked up out of the office of the specialist, they turned around to the Russian and said to him, what are you going to do now, the last three months of your life? At the Chagoy, Ayivan. He said, I'm going to take all my money out of the bank and I'm going to buy up all the vodka that there is in Russia and I'm going to drink and bathe in it till I die. They turned around to the Frenchman and asked him, what are you going to do? So he said the same thing, I'm going to take all my money out of the bank and I'm going to live a life full of tigers. They both, both turn around the Abdul to the Yid and they say to him, Yankel, what are you going to do? So he said, I'm going to take out $4,000 from the bank and buy a round the world ticket. And I'm going to spend the next three months of my life seeking a second opinion. <laughs> to seek a second opinion. So somebody will ask me, you're a rov, you have colleagues, you have friends, or yeshivas, talmidei chachomim, what happens is to get women to the women to get a second opinion? Why didn't you go to them? So I want to tell you, it's been mentioned a number of times that Bishwil Noshim Tzidkoni is Nigalu Avisenim in Mitzrayim Agamorim Saita. You know what was, what made them Tzidkoni is? Because of the apathy, some who didn't believe, they didn't have the Ruchnias in them to believe that the Goyal Tzedek, the Goyal Rishon is coming and going to redeem them. There were people there who worked very hard. They had Moses to look after. They have to do a photo samayones in that time. They have to worry where to get money. They have to worry about what this gvir will say and what that community will say. And so Sanish the past at that time. They didn't have the courage to accept the words of Moshe Rabbeinu. What did the Jewish women do? They came along into the slave camps and encouraged their husbands their fathers, they encouraged them to believe that Mashiach is coming and coming now. I want to make one special Nakuda. The Goyal Rishon was Meshe Rabbeinu. Have you ever wondered why it is that Kaddish Baruch Hu chose a man that the Torah designates, as he said in this week's Sedra, Vani Araus Fosayim? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't talk? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't give Sichas? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't, couldn't give an oration? He was a king, 40 years. He led in Kush. He was a great man with great talents. But 
But you know what I think the Torah is telling us and what Moshe Rabbeinu says? There are certain things which the Goyal of Rishon could not say. It had to come at Isarus del Tato. He couldn't come and tell the Jewish people what they should do. It had to come a movement from within to understand what is the demand of the hour. What should call you? The Metro Sheikha tells us that at the time when these words were said, it was at the time of the Chorben Beis Hamidosh. And Ibn Yehu Anovi was running in the streets of Jerusalem. And he saw the destruction and the flow of blood. And a voice came down from heaven to Ibn Yehu Anovi. He said, Ibn Yehu, go to the quarrying of the Ovois and wake them up. Let them come and plead for the Jewish people before me. And Ibn Yehu went to the Moga Samach and he woke up. They asked him, why are you waking us up from the grave? And the Medrash says, Yehu Anovi was frightened to tell them in case they say to him, how did you allow such a thing to happen in your lifetime? And then the Medrash goes on to tell us that Avraham went up the Milo, Yitzhak went up the Milo, Yaakov went up the Milo, etc., etc. And no satisfactory answer was given to them. In those moments of tragedy, Ibn Yehovah Zanovi said, A voice was heard on high, a bitter lamenting and weeping. Do you know who was weeping? Rachel the Neshama Tlalis of Am Yisrael, the mother of the people of Israel, was weeping. She was crying over her children. Mevako al what should have been written after that? It's Doneho as plural. Ki einam, for they are not there. Doesn't say that. It says ki einemu, for he is not there. He, Mother Rachel would not accept all the drama to finger, all the valid excuses, all the arguments and all the critics that told us we shouldn't act in this way, we shouldn't talk in this way. We shouldn't force the issue. A hackalon on this nimbus medrash and learn and wait. Mother Rachel, she had the heart of a mother. And she was not happy. May I know enough and she would not come be comforted. Why? He ain't never for he, Moshiach had not yet come. And when Jewish mothers weep because Moshiach is not here. Then a voice comes down from heaven and says, Mini Koilech Mibechi, don't weep anymore. Withhold your tears from your face. Because if women get together and they cry to Hashem is we want Moshiach now. Then an answer will come from heaven. There is hope for your future. We shovel one in the Gvulam and the Eibush does not do. In that generation, your children will return once again to our Tzino Agdusha, to the base Hamidor Shashlishi. And in Sagraim, in Sagraim will be written on this placard that I will carry. Agudas Nishay Nois Chabad. Thank you.
you for the privilege of being able to carry that placard in front of you. Welcome Mashiach was founded in Shvat of 5779 by a few women who wanted to speed the process of getting to the Geula Shlema. The first global event set for Chafei Adar, celebrating the birthdays of the Rebbe and the Rebetzin, featured women influencers speaking in TED Talk style, tambourine decorating, lots of dancing with live music. This had tons of locations around the world participating, and in Crown Heights, there were well over a thousand women, even though it was close to Pesach, the atmosphere was electrifying. We as women have a special connection to our Rebbe, through just knowing that he is ours and we are his children. His chassidim, no matter what. We women, our children today, are the epitome of bitachan and amuna. We are soldiers. We trust, we believe, without knowing. I don't know how, but how great are we? Rabbi Wolf, the Rebbe soldier who lights fires. Thank you, Rabbi Wolf. We're standing now in a time that the Abish is doing miracles for the Jewish people, unlike we've ever seen. And the Medrash says, Rashi brings it on the Pasuk and Oshea, Ein Maralehem Simen Toivli Yisrael, the Abish will not show us a good sign until we're going to ask for all those three things. And that's the meaning that we're going to seek out the Abish we're going to seek out as David Malcolm. But now is the time, and it must be led by the women. It must be, the Rebbe said it's going to be the women that are going to do it. It must be led by the women. I have no doubt that the men are going to follow. This is an opportunity of a, li- of a lifetime. This is the opportunity, the ultimate tzchus that was given to so we want Mashiach Hashem. So at the whole of Mashiach Hashem. We want Mashiach Hashem. So at the whole of Mashiach Hashem. We want 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 the Mashiach Hashem. The Rebbe needs an Am. The Rebbe needs a nation. The Rebbe needs people. The Rebbe needs us. Baruch Hashem, the initial Welcome Mashiach grassroots WhatsApp group grew and exploded into groups that have been reaching thousands of women across the oceans and over all the continents. Members on the groups tell us that after being on the groups for a while, they started their own share 
organized an event, translated our material into different languages. Baruch Hashem, we received constant feedback that our support and inspiration is very far-reaching. There have been campaign initiatives, event resources, educational media, delegations, and declarations. But as Maggie so eloquently put it, the Rebbe needs a nation. The Rebbe needs all of us. We can do so much more, faster, wiser, easier, lighter, and happier if we carry this monumental schuss together. We seriously need every single one to help. We are in it to win it. Since the Rebbe is a man of action, and we receive brachas nonstop, Baruch Hashem, for everyone involved in all your general and particular matters, here are some suggestions. Our Rebbe so Gesundheit doesn't like a lot of talk. He likes the bottom line. He wants to see action in all the excuses, in all the bubamices, in all the terutzim, go right out the window. Don't have any place by him. He doesn't spend one second on it. He looks at the bottom line. Does that pursue guitar? Okay. As we merited to receive multiple brachas from the Rebbe that our activities should reach a much broader audience, please sign up to join a Welcome Mashiach Working Committee. Everyone has talent and abilities or knows someone who knows someone. Will Mertz Hashem send around a spreadsheet? Please sign up to join the greatest work on earth. Number two, visit our lovely website, welcomingmashiach.org, for recordings, publications, the Xaviskashas to sign, and upcoming events, which we will be updating Bezos Hashem periodically. Number three, please join our groups if you're not yet on them. They are wonderful and full of Mashiach activity. Number one, the Welcome Mashiach Bulletin. It's like a master broadcast with Shiurim events and Mashiach in the news. Number two, Direct Connect, which has a weekly sicha taught by Shluchais on Yanyane Mashiach and Geula. Number three, All In, which has occasional posts about Hiskashus and Kabbalah Samalchus. Please text 917-676-9620 and specify which group you would like to be added to. Number four, you can print or order our gorgeous brand new Kabbalah Samachos cards for Miftzayim, designed by our very own Yona Rivka Kimmelman. Number five, sign yourself if you haven't yet, or your families, your friends, and encourage everyone to sign the Ksav Hiskashras. And stay tuned for plans to bring this to a whole new level. We will need ambassadors and helpers around the world, the Avners, to storm and rally Am Yisrael behind this final mission. It can be signed at signformashiach.com. That's signformashiach.com. And six, stay tuned for information about an Arab Shavuos delegation. Details to be announced. But hopefully, hopefully, we will have the Rebbe Melech Mashiach running the rest of this evening. And all that will be necessary will be to learn the Torah Chadasha from his holy mouth. And now for the crowning climax of this magical, productive evening, we will have the honor to be led by a very special Welcome Mashiach member, a busy mother, Bar Hashem, singer and writer, someone who devotes herself selflessly, literally around the clock, to the Rebbe Zinyanim, Yona Rivka, who will lead us in reading this most important, holy, heartfelt declaration in the world. The words will be on the screen so you can read along. Of course, we will all have in mind that we are representing all Jewish women and children and all of Kla Yisrael at large in a statement from the depths of our hearts that we double and triple our burning hiskashras, our ibergi gebenkite devotion to our dear Rebbe, our Nasi. We accept his malchus upon us, which is an extension of the malchus of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We stand ready to march to greet and crown Melech HaMashiach this Lag Ba'aymer, Tavshin Pei Beis. May he immediately be completely revealed for all the world to see. Please share this holy declaration with everyone you know. Each and every signature counts tremendously. Thank you. Ksav Hiskashrus Lagba Omer Tafshin Pei Beis. All Jews believe in the coming of Mashiach, yearn for him with a crushed spirit and anxious eyes, and wait expectantly for his imminent arrival. 
In addition, as Anash Chassidei Chabad, we follow the ways of the Rebbeim, binding themselves totally to the Nasi of the generation by learning his Torah, fulfilling his directives, and carrying out his programs and activities. Therefore, all of us, as one man with one heart, stand firmly on an unshakable foundation, a pure belief that the true and complete redemption will occur in our generation, and not a statement of his in this regard will remain unfulfilled. Furthermore, all of Anash, as one man with one heart, believe, acknowledge, and are witness to the fact that our Rebbe, the Nasi of our generation, continues to guide us in all facets of life, while at the same time directing us to the true and complete redemption in actuality. Hence, as one man with one heart, we now come together with a united desire and cry that emanates from the depths of our hearts. How much longer, Ad Masai, we do not accept in any way the current situation in which leadership occurs in a manner of concealment. We want to see our king before us with our physical eyes in this material world, leading us among all of Israel and the entire world, building the holy temple in its place, gathering the dispersed of the children of Israel, and ultimately rectifying the entire earth to serve Hashem. Hence, all of us, as one man with one heart, express through this missive our renewed dedication to the Rebbe, to perform all he instructed us with self-nullification beyond intellect, emotion, or personal will to fully achieve his shlichus in bringing the true and complete redemption. Through his 10 mitzvah campaigns, through strengthening Torah and all matters regarding Judaism, through spreading the wellsprings of Hasidus, ourselves to studying Torah related to the redemption and Mashiach, publicizing the prophecy that Hine Zem Mashiach Ba, me behold Mashiach has come, and preparing the Jewish people to greet Mashiach by explaining and teaching these topics to every man and woman. His holy words presented in the well-known talk of Beis Nissen Tavshin Memches declared, there needs to be an action coming from the people to proclaim Yechi HaMelech, long live the king. For the idea expressed in this declaration is that we have reached the time when those who lie in the dust will awake and sing, and among them, my father-in-law, our Rebbe, the leader of our generation, as well as up to and including David, King Mashiach. Based on the above, we, among tens of thousands of Jews the world over, declare as one person with one heart, proclaiming from the depths of our very being, Long live the King! Yechi adzaynenu moreinu verabenu melech hamashiach le'aylam va'ed. May our prayerful request, our heartfelt and determined cry immediately influence the Holy One, blessed be He, to uplift and grant strength to our King Mashiach, and then the kingship of the world will be Hashem's. May we merit to immediately and literally see the King in His glory, and He will redeem us. That brings us to the end of our program. Thank you so much for celebrating with us, and we hope you were inspired as the crowning generation, and may we all rise up together into our destiny of Malchus. And may it happen today, and we should be zeicha to be celebrating with Bar Yechai and Ben Yishai, the Rebbe Melech HaMashiach, today. Yechi Adonainu Moreinu Verabeinu Melech HaMashiach Le'elam Vahed. Le'elam Vahed. Yeah.